ever get this feeling like you stumble across something that just yanks you into a whole different way of thinking? That's what we're doing today, sort of a deep dive into how Chinese military strategy is being critiqued right now. Okay, I'm intrigued. So we're looking at these excerpts originally in Chinese, and it's wild how the author uses these historical parallels. And we're not talking your usual tanks and troops here. No, what then? It's deeper. They're saying the Chinese leadership is, like, stuck on these old-school strategies, specifically the Terzin Reservoir battles, you know, Changjin from the Korean War, and then the Spring Offensive in Vietnam. Hmm. Interesting choices. Both for Chinese victories, but, man, the cost and lives. Exactly, and that's their point, right? This piece suggests the leadership thinks they can just, like, repeat those wins today, but doesn't that raise huge e-red flags? I mean, technology, the whole world's different. Huge. It makes you wonder, what are they missing about modern military tech and tactics? And the author, they're really hung up on this reliance on propaganda, on suppressing real information. Which they contrast with. With how the U.S. military trains. Big emphasis on studying actual historical battles, warts and all, accurate numbers, deployments, the losses. To learn from everything, wins and failures. Exactly. So it's like without that clear view of history, you can't make the smartest strategic decisions. You got it. And they illustrate this with this almost funny example. Imagine a restaurant, right, falling apart. But they claim, oh, we've been open 30 years, lines around the block. Ah, the old fake it till you make it, even when the it is crumbling. Exactly. The author uses that to show how easily we're swayed by appearances, by a narrative. Yeah. Even if it's bogus. So how does this restaurant thing, how does that connect back to propaganda and military strategy? I think it shows how risky it is to rely on, like, surface level stuff mm -hmm. and how crucial critical thinking is, like that restaurant, right? Bad foundation, bad decisions, doesn't matter if it's a business or planning a whole military strategy, you're going to have problems. The author is really warning us about blindly trusting a narrative, especially if it's coming from, you know, official sources. It's interesting. They then connect this whole information thing to another system, China's legal framework. It's like they're saying these parts of society, they're all intertwined. Yeah, it's a key point they make. For China to move forward, they argue it's not enough to just change the leaders. It needs a whole system overhaul. Huh? Legal framework, how power is actually spread out. Not just the top, but the whole structure. Right. They point to the U.S., actually. Our federalist system, where states and local governments, they have some real power. So less top-down control. Exactly. And this ties into their idea of personal responsibility, being accountable. The author thinks people should be ready to, like, seek justice for harms done under the current system. Housing issues, debt, things uh, like that. Don't wait for someone to fix it for you. Be ready to fight for your own rights. Kind of. That's the gist. Yeah. They even go so far as to say foreign legal experts might be needed, you know, yeah. to make sure things are fair, impartial in a post-authoritarian China. Which is a bold statement, right? Wow, yeah. So we've got the military critique, this truth and critical thinking bit, and now this legal overhaul. It's like this author's laying out a blueprint for a totally different China. It is multi-layered, definitely. But running through it all is this idea of individual empowerment, agency. Change can't just be forced. It has to come from the people demanding better, holding those in power accountable. Which brings us to that phrase, borrowing arrows from a straw boat. What's that all about? Oh, right. It's a metaphor. Mm. Think strategic patience, cunning even. Not about direct confrontation. People should be gathering knowledge, resources, even if it's disguised as, like, propaganda. So learning the rules of the game, even if you don't plan on playing by them forever. Exactly. And then when the time is right, using that to make real change. That's subtle. Become your own expert. See through the BS. Be ready when the opportunity comes. Makes you wonder, how does someone even begin to do that within that system? It's a call to action, for sure, but nuanced. The author doesn't give a how-to guide, more like a framework for how to even think about change. It's kind of mind-blowing, right? You've got military strategy, then BAM, access to info, even personal debt, all connected. It's like the author is saying, these aren't separate issues. They're all part of this bigger system, right? Right. And what I find so interesting is that link they make yeah. between, like, flawed military thinking and these huge systemic issues. Yeah. Debt, lack of individual rights. It reminds us that any society, their ideas about strategy, defense, it reflects deeper stuff cultural values, their whole political system. And then that phrase, man, borrowing arrows from a straw boat. 
Sounds almost like, I don't know, intellectual resistance or something. It does, doesn't it? It's like you <laughs> recognize the tools, the tactics, even if you don't agree with them. And then you figure out how to use them to your advantage. Not through force, but through knowing more. Strategy. Mm -hmm. Really understanding the system from the inside out. Yeah, it's like we talk about winning the information war these days. But here, it's not just about having the right info. It's knowing how to use any info effectively, even if you don't trust where it's coming from. Which takes serious critical thinking. And as this author points out, that's not easy in a place flooded with propaganda, you know. This piece is pushing people to look beyond the surface, question everything, think for themselves. Which, let's be real, it's hard. It's way easier to just accept the stories we're told, especially if they make us feel good, right? Oh, totally. But like the author says, those company narratives, they can have huge consequences down the line. Bad military decisions or a whole generation stuck in debt. It's a wake-up call, you know? See clearly and then get to work building something better, one smart decision at a time. It really makes you think. That search for truth, having the guts to think critically, it's not just some high-minded ideal, it's essential. Not just for understanding the world, but for navigating our own lives, too.